Okay, so we just wrapped up WWE SummerSlam 2017 overall. You know, not not the same excitement I had coming out of NXT TakeOver last night. If you watched my review, obviously I was flipping out just like everybody else was about what happened. But, um, you know, this show uh, wasn't bad in my opinion. It wasn't great either. It was a decent show, you know. It, it was what it was in my opinion. In my opinion, a lot of matches were really underwhelming on the show. Um, and I think only two matches, really three if you're including one of the kickoff matches, uh, really surpassed expectations and were really great, or at least meant expectations, if you will. Um, and, you know, really just gave you something to remember out of this show. Just a lot of these matches just felt like Raw matches or SmackDown matches, whatever. Just TV matches in general, just, you know, and just some of the questionable winners, I guess, and, you know, it's not not the biggest deal in the world, it's just kind of left a sour taste in your mouth with some of these things, um, but, you know, what are you going to do? So, um, with that being said, like I said, it, it was just kind of a, it was, it was an overall, just like I said, just decent to average show with a couple of great matches scattered in the 13 matches that we had between the kickoff and the, the main pay-per-view. And to be honest, if there's not there's not going to be a lot of explanation from me for some of these matches because some of them I was so just like I don't even feel like watching this, like like I was, some of them I just wasn't into at all. I just wasn't paying attention to that much. I was on Twitter or whatever else. Um, so you know we'll talk about those when we when we get there. But just, let's just get into the show now. My takeover review went like 20 minutes, 25 minutes last night. So this will honestly probably go around there because there's so many matches. But we'll try to keep it as short as possible. So getting into it. Uh, the first kickoff match of the night was a six-man tag team match. The Miz and the Miz Taraj, uh, the Miz, Bo Dallas, and Curtis Axel, took on Jason Jordan, Jeff Hardy, and Matt Hardy in front of what seemed like 50 people. They started this kickoff match a half hour into the kickoff, so let's just say on the East Coast time, like 5.30, um, there was barely anybody in the arena. They kept showing shots of everybody getting into the arena, and it just seemed like all the, are all, all the fans were still outside the Barclays Center while they were starting this match. I swear there was nobody in the crowd. And they showed The Miz after the match um, going up to like the WWE social media guy in the front row at like hard cam side at ringside. And there's nobody on that side. It's literally completely empty. It was absolutely hilarious, honestly, seeing the vision. But that's kind of sucks that they threw these guys out there in a empty arena six-man tag team match pretty much. But what, it was what it was. And it wasn't, um, you know, it was pretty much just on the same par as their, their role match for Monday. Just another average... TV match, you know, a lot of these matches that I'm going to say are kind of just TV matches, or matches that I don't really see, there wasn't nothing to complain about match quality wise, but there just wasn't nothing to get excited about, so on um, The Miz and The Miz Taraj ended up winning, Miz had the skull crushing finale on Jason Jordan, and Jason Jordan ate the pin, so um, you know, uh, not the ideal situation for a guy you're trying to get over, but you know, what are you going to do, at least he, at least he got pinned by a champion, right, I don't know. Moving on, we have the Cruiserweight title match. That was felt like it was immediately after this, probably like 20 minutes later. There's a little more uh, of a group of people in the arena, but it still wasn't filled all the way. Um, but it was Akira Tozawa defending the Cruiserweight title against Neville. Um, another match, I think uh, Neville and Akira Tozawa, honestly, a lot of their TV matches haven't really been, um, excuse me, anything special. But I will give them credit. Their Great Balls of Fire kickoff match I thought was really good. Their match this past Monday, besides that TV match, I did think was a good, uh, pretty good match. And then this one I thought was really good too. So at least, even though I haven't been a big fan of the feud, at least their big matches, like their Cruiserweight title matches, have always, or have all been, you know, good to, to really good, you know, somewhere around there. So this match was, you know, a decent match and a fine match to watch. I had no problems with it. And it was better than I expected it would be. And it also ended with Neville becoming a new Cruiserweight champion. Uh, I know we hit the... Red Hour, Red, Red Arrow, or that, yeah, I almost said Red Hour, Red Arrow to the back of Akira Tozawa, and pinned him there, that's all I really remember about the finish, Neville was rocking some sweet white and silver gear, that's all I remember about the match, I do, like, I know I did say it was a really good match, but that's all I really remember, but, you know, it was what it was, I don't know why they took the title off Neville in the first place, if he was just going to win back to SummerSlam, I don't know. I mean, I try. To, I don't really mind when they do title switches like that because it kind of adds a little more realism to the the TV. Like, you know, hey, he won. He got a, the best of him this night, but he won it right back. I don't know. It was just kind of a thought, but yeah, whatever. We're just gonna move on to kickoff match. Spend too much time. But um, SmackDown tag team title match: uh, the New Day versus the Usos. 
awesome, awesome match here. I wish this would have been on the main show, um, but unfortunately it wasn't. But what are you going to do? Um, just an absolutely incredible match. Some of the near falls that were hit in this were just insane. Um, the New Day had the Usos a couple times. The Usos had the New Day a couple times, and it was just off the charts. Com no doubt the best match these guys have ever had, these two teams have ever had. Uh, definitely blew out their battleground match, and their battleground match was really, really good. Match of the night at that show, which I was actually at, by the way, so I had the privilege of seeing that. And um, honestly, probably one of the best kickoff matches that we've ever had in the past five years or so that they've been doing kickoffs. Um, if not the best one, I don't really remember anything that was better than this. Um, just it was just absolutely awesome. Definitely go out of your way to watch this if you didn't watch the kickoff. Because if you're not, if you're not watching, if you didn't, uh, excuse me, if you didn't see this, you're definitely missing out. It's just a hell of a tag team matchup that actually saw the Usos winning in the end and regaining the SmackDown Live tag team titles. That was a really positive note. Uh, I honestly, I didn't, ha I don't have a problem with the New Day or them holding the titles. Um, but I just wasn't feeling their whole reign, and I thought that the Usos have been on such a high as of late that they should be and just deserve to have the tag team titles. So I'm really glad they won the titles back here, and it was an awesome ending. Just Biggie ate like five, su four, you know, four or five super kicks from the Usos, and then they hit a, a double splash on Biggie and got the pin from there. And there was some other stuff going on before that. Like I don't want to name a bunch of spots. We're already six minutes into the video, I'm not even on the main show. But the point is, Usos won the titles. I'm um, very happy that they won the titles back, and like I said, go watch this match if you didn't see it, because it's definitely uh, worth the time to watch. Uh, moving on to the main show, moving on to the actual SummerSlam event, Baron Corbin versus John Cena kicked off the show. Uh, I, let me just kick it off by saying this, John Cena won, and in defeat, I will say that Baron Corbin um, at least didn't look horrible. He didn't look like a fool like he did on SmackDown. He did uh, have most of the uh, momentum. And most of the upper hand, for the majority of this match, it was, uh, according to Wikipedia, and I, uh, you know, I have an idea of how long it was as well, because I watched it, it was about a 10 minute match, or a little over a 10 minute match, and, uh, you know, Baron Corbin, like I said, had a lot of the momentum, and he did hit a, you know, had a couple of your falls on Cena, and he, like I said, he, at least in defeat, he didn't look bad, obviously, uh, Cena kind of got the win, like, real quick, I forget what Baron Corbin was doing, but Cena kind of, I, I think he hit a clothesline, and soon after hit the AA and that was it um so Cena wins you know what are you gonna do uh, Baron Corbin really needed this win um but unfortunately I read earlier today that I don't know I guess he's in the doghouse or WWE right now for some stuff he said on Twitter but what are you gonna do um I really don't agree with that but you know Baron Corbin needed the win but Cena wins and like I said at least he didn't look horrible in defeat and it was what it was it was probably they had a match on SmackDown, like the end of last year, earlier this year, whatever it was, and that was an alright match, but this, so th but this was definitely a better match up here. Um, but, overall the match was what it was, Cena wins, what are you gonna do? Um, Naomi versus Natalya for the SmackDown Women's title. Uh, this one started off, I think, pretty good, uh, Naomi hit like a senton, I don't know, neckbreaker, I don't know what the hell it's called. Um, was it outside the ring? I think it was, like off the steel steps or off the ring apron, diving over Natalya and catching her neckbreaker style kind of that was a cool spot there was something else too that i'm forgetting um that was i thought was another cool spot as well um but you know it was a, it was a pretty good match i'd say it was probably in my opinion i think i enjoyed this one a little bit more than the uh the raw women's title match which i'm actually surprised about um but you know it still it still was you know a whatever match it had a couple it had it had its little moments but besides that it wasn't nothing great um but natalia like i predicted surprisingly i predicted natalia to win but I, like, still didn't think that she was going to win. I thought Nata or Naomi was going to win, and then maybe Carmelo cashes in. But uh, Natalia ends up winning with the sharpshooter, tapping on Naomi, and becomes a new SmackDown Women's Champion. So, you know, I, I, good for her. Um, Naomi, Naomi's had the title for a while now. Um, so, you know, I have no problem with them getting the title off her. Na or Natalia's not my first choice. She's a girl who a year ago I couldn't stand, but at least ever since she's been on, ever since the brand split happened and she's been on SmackDown, she at least provided some good matches um, throughout it, and you know, I'm just tolerable, um, for, at least for me, because I couldn't stand her, like I said a year ago, but um, you know, she, she wins the title, it is what it is, moving on, we have Big Cass versus the Big Show, Enzo Amore is suspended by the ring in a shark cage, Jesus, oh my god, alright, this, according to Wikipedia, this match went 10 minutes and 30 seconds, so according to Wikipedia, this, this match went longer than John Cena and Mary Corbin did, 10 minutes was way too long, this match, I, I, it's it sucked. All right, it sucked. I like Big Cass. I want to support the dude. I hope the dude does well. I, I like Enzo. Could probably use a little fire under his ass right now, and maybe that might be actually getting fired. I don't know. That didn't really make sense, but you get my point. But 
you know, this just didn't belong. Like, it just, it, the match was just sucked. It, it didn't really do much for Big Cass. Yes, he got the win, so, hey, good for him. But en Enzo ended up getting out of the shark cage. He, like, took all his clothes off, put some oil on himself, slipped through. And I was wondering why they had the shark cage hanging pretty much so low, like, so low to the ring. And then Enzo did that, and I was like, all right, that's why. Um, and, you know, it was what it was. Big Show was just, he didn't really do anything worth noting. I will I will say this, Big Show was selling his hand throughout the match and making Big Cass look uh, decently good, so I will give that a little give that a little notch to the match. Besides that, this match went way too long. It was boring as shit. Big Cass won. What are you going to do? Let's move on. Randy Orton versus Rusev. Okay, so we went from a match that went too long to a match that went, I don't even know if it started. Um, well, it did start, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, Randy Orton's making his entrance, and Rusev attacks from behind. Immediately, I'm like, are we going to get two years in a row Rusev's match get cuts off SummerSlam? Because you remember last year, Rusev and Roman Reigns were supposed to face for the United States title, and the match didn't even start. They brawled for like two, a couple minutes, and then that was it. It was a no contest. So I almost thought we were going to get that here, but no, the match actually started, uh, and the, according to Wikipedia again, and uh, Wikipedia says 10 seconds, Twitter was saying 12 seconds, a couple people... But, um, yeah, the match lasted, uh, you know, shorter than this cup of tea I'm drinking right now. A nice green tea to cleanse my, cleanse the body at the end of the day. But, um, yeah, the match begins. Orton RKs Rusev. That, that's it. Or, Orton wins. Yeah, I don't even know what else to say. So, we went for a match that, like I said, was way too long to too short? I don't know. Sure, nobody really cared. Like, nobody gave a damn about Orton and Rusev facing. So, if there's going to be a match that had to end like this... I guess this would be the match to do it, or cash and show. Um, but it sucks for Rusev, because he <laughs> comes back and, you know, loses the Cena in a joke of a flag match. Loses the Orton, looking even like a, more of a joke than Baron Corbin did this past Tuesday. It's just like, how are you supposed to take Rusev seriously here? And, like, after SummerSlam, like, what the hell? Come on, man. Um, and I don't know where Orton goes from here. I, I read a rumor that he might be going to Raw. I, I don't know if that's even the slightest bit true, but let's just move on. Alexa Bliss versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, honestly, underwhelming, not as good as I thought it was going to be. I thought their Great Ball to Fire match was definitely a lot better than this. I definitely enjoyed that one a lot more. Um, this just wasn't up to par with that, I think. I think this was definitely under that match. And that's not saying it was bad, it was just an average match. Um, it, it was what it was, like a lot of these matches were. Sasha Banks, surprisingly... Ends up winning, and see, I'm, I'm saying surprisingly because I picked Alexa Bliss, but honestly, when I thought about it, and I wasn't mad that Sasha Banks won, I know a lot of people were pissed that Sasha Banks won, um, because they just, they dread Sasha Banks and Bailey. I personally, like, all their best friends, and they've been in it for so long, and sure, some of that stuff that they do in their promos, and, excuse me, and whatnot, and their being best friends is, is a little bit, you know, over the top sometimes, but honestly, I I love every second of it, because if they do it right, and there's a payoff where when Bailey comes back and Sasha's still the champ, Sasha's going to be like, what the what the hell, why is Bailey getting all this spotlight, and, 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 and she's going to beat her, beat her the hell up, and hopefully we get a, the payoff, like I said, between Sasha and Bailey at WrestleMania, uh, and obviously that's way far down the line from now, but that, that's why I wasn't mad that Sasha Banks won the title, because if you think about it, it just kind of adds to a slow build that might lead to a Bailey versus Sasha Banks match at WrestleMania, which don't sit here and say to me, even if you're not a fan of Bailey versus Sasha Banks, or Bailey and Sasha Banks right now, that you wouldn't be intrigued in that match, because every single person in this wrestling community, whatever we're calling it, in the WWE Universe, whatever, absolutely loved the series of Bailey and Sasha Banks matches we got a couple years ago in NXT, so don't sit there and tell me you wouldn't be down for that. But besides, that's, besides the point, Sasha beats Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's title. Uh, I'm surprised she won it now, if anything. But what are you going to do? Average match. Let's move on once again. Bray Wyatt versus the Demon King Finn Balor. Um, it was awesome to see the Demon back. Honestly, I thought the Raw match from this past Monday was better. This is uh, a match that I just wasn't into at all, to be honest. So once, once, once Balor came out and the entrance was done, I was like, okay, I really don't give a damn. A lot of people were really hyped for this this rivalry to finally happen. I personally was like, all right, it's kind of cool, but I know that's not, you know, I'm not expect, I'm not, I'm not really f saying it's gonna be bad, but I knew it wasn't gonna be great, and it's probably, I, I wouldn't see a reason to continue it from here, unless they're gonna get other people involved. But I don't know. I just wasn't into the match. Um, besides Balor, Balor being the demon again, um, and Balor ended up winning with the coup de gras. 
So, you know, good for Balor. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have much to say here. Let's just uh, continue on with the show. Um, so, whatever match. Uh, Raw Tag Team Championships. Sheamus and Cesaro defend against Dino versus Seth Rollins. One of my favorite matches of the night. Um, one of the, the two main matches on the show, or three matches overall throughout the entire night that were just absolutely great. Uh, from the get-go, these guys were just killing it. Just absolutely awesome match. Fun to watch. Not a slow not a slow couple minutes where there's a rest hold and you just get bored and it takes you away from the match. I was in it the whole time. One thing I want to mention is you kind of saw the crowd starting to get distracted a little bit. And that's because some Mark in the crowd brought a freaking beach ball because that's a, a thing now. Every, you know, you know, night after WrestleMania, whatever show, here and there, that a fan likes to bring a beach ball to the arena. And Cesaro wasn't having it, so once he seen that that damn beach ball was somewhere in his sight... He ran off the off the freaking apron, hops the guardrail, grabs the beach ball, rips that shit up, and I'm like, fuck yeah. Go Cesaro, you're the man. That was absolutely hilarious. It was awesome. And uh, I'm getting my mouth getting dry talking all up. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that was awesome. That was one of my favorite parts of the match, and it had nothing to do with the match besides Cesaro wasn't having that shit. People were going to pay attention to his match whether they liked it or not. And people should have been paying attention to this match because this match was one of the best matches of the night and it was absolutely awesome. They should have did that shit during Big Cast and Big Show or something like that if they were going to pull that out. But that's besides the point. Um, just awesome match. Like I, like I said, I'm not good at remembering spots and specific things unless they really, really stand out in matches. So, you know, I apologize because this is a match that I did really pay attention to. The Ambers and Rollins were just really great teaming in this match, like obviously everyone expected. Cesaro and Sheamus were on their A game tonight. Uh, one a little thing, to, little things to mention: Cesaro and Sheamus matching gear was sick. Rollins and Ambrose were both wearing black and red on their. Well, Rollins and Ambrose had black and red gear. Ambrose had a red logo on his uh, hoodie that he wore to the ring. Nice like, little touch there. I did love the gear uh, matchups matchups in this match. Um, if that made any sense, but um, ending comes. What was the ending? Uh. I believe Seth Rollins hit his finisher, I forget what it's called, the freaking jumping knee on Sheamus, and then Ambrose him with Dirty Deeds. I could be completely wrong. I, um, like I said, not good at remembering little specific moments of shit that happened in matches, so I apologize. But Ambrose and Rollins ends up getting the victory and are the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Very happy that they won the uh, tag titles. Um, kind of would have been a sour end of this match if they didn't. Um, nothing against Cesaro and Sheamus. Obviously, those guys are awesome together. But um, it kind of would have been a, a blow, in, in my opinion, if, they, if Ambrose and Rollins didn't win here. I think it was a really good decision to have them win the titles here, and hopefully we get more Ambrose and Rollins uh, versus Cesaro and Sheamus matches down the line. I'd love to see like a two out of three falls rematch at um, No Mercy next month, um, and I would you know, or just a rematch in general because I'm sure we will get one. But that was just a, an idea that just popped in my head. Now I just would love to see something like that, and just uh, yeah, Ambrose and Rollins win. Uh, honestly. I don't, this was honestly probably my favorite match of the night, even though the main event was absolutely <laughs> just awesome to watch. Um, it was just a thing of beauty, which we'll talk about. But um, just with the, the the moment at the end with Ambrose and Rollins winning, uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, just, just, all these guys are just so good at what they do. It was just a really fun match to watch. So that's why I think, for me, this has a little bit of an edge over the main event. That's why this is going to be my, I, I'm saying this is my favorite match of the night. But um, yeah, so Ambrose and, Wall Ambrose and Rollins are the new tag team champions. And uh, up next, we have the United States Championship match. Special guest referee, Shane McMahon, AJ Styles defends the U.S. title against Kevin Owens. Another match that, excuse me, once it got started, I just found myself not very interested in, even though I wanted to be interested in it, because I felt like it was a, with the, with the uh, inclusion, if that's a word, um, of Shane McMahon, um, with the tension that I'm sure that we were going to be getting billed to Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon down the line, I felt like I should be interested in this match, and I wanted to be. Um, to see what was going to happen. And near the end of the match, I did get into it. But uh, from what I was paying attention to in and out of just between looking at my phone and looking at my TV, uh, Shane McMahon, I felt like he got knocked down like a million times. It just like they kept, and, and a lot of people kept saying this too, that they were doing bumps and, you know, interactions with him a little too much, which, uh, hell, I didn't see half of them, so I won't say that. But, um, you know, it was what it was from what I saw. It wasn't that, it, it was probably, from what I saw, and I'm not saying I, I, like, left the room or anything. I just wasn't fully into the matchup. But from what I was really paying attention to, it was a good match. And, uh, the, you know, the last final stretch of the match was what I was really into. 
um, and what I've thought was, you know, kind of led to probably the best Ambrose, or Ambrose, uh, AJ and Owens match of this rivalry at least, because um, I think a lot of people forget they had a match on Raw two weeks before WrestleMania 32 that I was actually at, that was a really good match, um, but um, of this of this feud of this year, it's probably their best matchup, and uh, the ending, I believe Shane McMahon, or Owens was in Shane McMahon's face, and they went, kind of went head to head, and Owens pushed Shane, and then Shane pushed Owens, I think AJ rolled him up from there, which was a kick out, and then AJ hit all his signature stuff, phenomenal forearm, um, or the, or I believe he hit the Pele kick, then the phenomenal forearm, they hit Styles Clash, and one, two, three, AJ Styles retains the U.S. title, so still the uh, United States champion AJ Styles, not sure who's going to contend for the title from here, I would love to see Chad Gable in that spot, but let's be honest, is that really going to happen? Probably not, but it'll probably be like Rusev or something at the next show, which, <laughs> great, um, but you know. Let's move on. Uh, WWE Championship match. WWE Champion Jinder Mahal versus Shinsuke Nakamura, the mother effing king. You know, was what it was. Uh, really, was really hoping that Shinsuke was going to win this match here. Uh, and here's the thing. I When Jinder Mahal won the title, I was like, alright, this is cool, honestly. Because it was something different. And even though it was kind of like he, way out of the blue. And there was guys who I'd picked before him. And I was... Still, just like, when he won the title, it's like so many thoughts going in my head. I was just like, man, they put the title on this guy, and they took the title off Bray. Bray was doing so good, and they put the title off, put the title on this guy. But I was just like, you know what? Screw the negativity. Let me just give this a chance. And I did. And you know what? I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a General Mahal hater, because I do like the dude. And it has been something different. Whether SmackDown overall has been a good show or not, Jinder Mahal, has, Jinder, Jinder Mahal in the main event and as champion has been something different. But I think it was definitely time for them to take the title off of him and put the title on Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, considering because Jinder Mahal's already beaten uh, Randy Orton on several occasions, uh, John Cena's going to, to Raw. I mean, I know that's not official, but he's still a free agent. Um, and obviously, that's where rumors have been going for, for months now. So Cena's most likely on his, on his way to Raw. AJ Styles is wrapped up in the U.S. title uh, picture. Owens is probably nowhere near the WWE title scene right now. So Shinsuke Nakamura is the, the only chance, really. The o And Baron Corbin lost money in the bank. So Shinsuke Nakamura is the only uh, name left to take the title off Jinder, and that's not saying he won't down the line, because I think he has to, but it's just like, I really thought they should have pulled the trigger on this tonight, and it was just a really, just, it just not a great finish, I thought, it was just the Singh brothers got involved, Nakamura took them both out, and then Jinder Moha hit a pretty shitty, kind of botched looking version of whatever his finish was called, the Coloss, or something like that. Um, it just looked like he couldn't get it in all the way, which I'm not going to rag on for, because, you know, heat of the moment, you're just kind of trying to do it, so nothing gets there, but it's just like, yeah, it was what it was, I just, I really felt like there was a missed opportunity there, and it, the match itself wasn't anything spectacular, it did have a little bit of a big fight feel going in, I think the promo beforehand that they showed was really, really good, um, Shinji Nakamura got the violin entrance, uh, Jinder Mahal, obviously, I'm just a fan of his entrance, I think his theme music's badass, and uh, what's the SmackDown ring announcer's name? Greg Hamilton, I think. Um, just was really into the in, was really into the in, in ring introductions, and it just felt like a big time match um, when it happened and when they were finally face to face. And it was just like, and eh, the match was very underwhelming. I thought it honestly could have been better. Um, I think Jinder Mahal is capable of a little bit more of a better match, but what are you gonna do? Mahal wins. <sighs> You know, I'm sure Nakamura's going to get the title down the line. I mean, I think, he, like I said, he has to, but it's just, I really thought that they should have just been like, you know what, let's just let's just do it here. Let's just pull the trigger on, or pull the, pull the trigger on Shinsuke Nakamura here, give him the title, uh, and, you know, make fans happy. But, or make the majority of fans happy, let me say. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, not my, it kind of put a sour taste in my mouth going into the main event. But luckily... The main event, the WWE Universal Championship match, Brock Lesnar defends against Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe kicked off, and it was a hell of a match. My God, Braun Strowman looked like a freaking, he looked literally like the monster among men, I'll say, a monster among men, I'll say it. Um, just freaking, may, just mayhem from right at the, from the, from the first bell, just everyone went after each other, and then Braun just started tearing ass on these guys. Just freaking lays out Reigns, lays out Samoa Joe. Uh, what, what was it? Samoa Joe had, a, had the Kokita clutch on Reigns on the outside, and then, or no, on, on Lesnar on the outside, and then Roman Reigns comes running, hits a spear on Lesnar, Joe got out of the way, so Reigns goes, spears Lesnar through the barricade, and 
just like everybody else, I thought, all right, well, Lesnar's probably going to take a nap for 15 minutes while these guys tough it out, and then he'll come, uh, you know, in for the finish. But luckily that didn't happen um, in a way. Um, but right after that, like a minute later, Braun Strowman does a running power slam on the Brock through an announce table. Then a couple of minutes, then like a, another minute later, does a same thing, running power slam to Lesnar, throw another announce table, and then flips the last announce table onto Brock Lesnar. So at that point, Strowman's just murdering Brock Lesnar. They take Bron uh, Brock Lesnar out on a stretcher. Um, Braun Strowman's just, you know, beating ass from there. And then, like, not, I think it was only probably, in my opinion, probably like five minutes later. Excuse me. Brock comes out from the entrance. Everyone's trying to hold him back. He gets in the ring, immediately takes down Strowman. They're going at it. Um, so Brock, even though he was away for this match for five minutes, it wasn't like everyone thought it was going to be where he got speared on that one spot and then he was just going to go to sleep for 15 minutes uh, while these guys uh, have, have the rest of the match. But that's not what happened. A lot of near falls in this. And, you know, there's a couple of moments where I really thought Braun was going to win, where I really thought Roman was going to win, where Joe could have won, where Lesnar almost won originally but, you know, didn't. Um, and then, it was, what was it, um, so, uh, somebody was in the ring, I think Joe was laid out, something along those lines, but the point is, is Joe versus Strowman was, uh, Joe and Strowman were both out on the outside, Roman and Brock were the only two left in the ring, Brock Lesnar ends up hitting the F5 on Roman Reigns to win the match and retain the WWE Universal Championship, so Brock Lesnar not only retains the title, but doesn't pin Samoa Joe like I think everyone thought who thought Lesnar was going to retain thought like he was going to pin Joe. But he flat out pins Roman Reigns, which I thought was awesome because Reigns, it won't, it won't affect Roman Reigns. But if he would pin Joe for the second month in a row, I definitely would have hurt Samoa Joe. So I'm glad that not a little, I, I, honestly, I wouldn't have had a problem with any of these guys winning, even Roman. Um, but I'm glad Lesnar retained. And I'm glad he didn't pin uh, Samoa Joe. So definitely an awesome main event. Um, so, you know, overall, like I was saying earlier, SummerSlam was what it was. A decent show, was some questionable finishes, with some not really interesting matches, but in the end, I think I think we got a, a, the best kickoff match we've ever gotten with the Usos with the New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Ambrose and Rollins versus Cesaro and Sheamus uh, was a great match, my favorite match of the night. And then the main event, uh, we just, uh, the main event was just a great way to clo at least close the show, at least leave us with a good taste and like at least send us home happy, even though obviously, you know, you know you get the expression that I'm saying. The point is overall, SummerSlam was what it was. This uh, video is going on uh, long enough, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed SummerSlam. Leave your thoughts on the show in the comments below. And uh, I think that's it. So yeah, make sure you follow me on Twitter at NoIkono. Hit the subscribe button below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.